Hello friends, welcome to the a very novel topic and interesting topic in the field of data science. It is natural language processing. Okay, this is a very big video and a big presentation I'll be showing over here with the help of natural language processing. Uh, first, we'll see NLPs uh, because NLP is actually a very wide topic, but actually uh, I am just summarizing all the things together in this video about the natural language processing and then at the end of this session I will show how to combine the NLP and the machine learning and how effectively we are be generating our results out of it. So let's start <coughs> what NLP is. So see this diagram uh, deep learning is surrounded by machine learning so all uh, machine learning so deep learning is advanced uh, machine learning that we call and natural language processing is having its own importance along with uh, uh, the communication with machine learning and deep learning is also possible there. So, in this way we are going to make use of the application of uh, natural language processing. What do you mean by this part? Natural language processing is about developing applications and services that are able to understand the human languages. For example, speech recognition, speech translation, understanding a complete sentence, understanding the synonyms of matching words and writing the complete grammatically correct sentence and the paragraphs. This is not everything. You can think about lot many industrial applications uh, about these ideas and its benefits also. So when a, whatever language we speak, that language operations are controlled by the algorithms called as the natural language processing algorithms there. So what are the benefits? See, there are uh, millions of GBs every day are generated by blogs, social media sites, web pages over the world, but not to a common uh, language. So, they are created in almost all the languages. So, there are many companies gathering all of this data, understanding users and their passions, give the reports to companies and adjust their plans. So, what, what I want to say here that data around the world is stored in different languages. If you just think from English point of view, it's very difficult for us to analyze the data. So if the data is there in all other languages, we can analyze by uh, some effective technique. Plus, the data is in human spoken languages. So human spoken language is always non-structured. We are not talking in table. We are not talking in a structural language. So uh, we are having grammars. We are having lot many things in the grammars. We are giving our expressions. We are giving our views, negative views, positive views. We are giving our uh, everything like questions, exclamations, many things are there which are involved in it. Now, how to handle that? This stream, natural language processing will tell you that. So you know what? Search engines are not only implementation of uh, the NLP. There are lot many awesome uh, implementations are out there. So if you see the Google, Google itself is one of the best example of natural language processing implementation on search engine. But whenever we have to combine the things that we speak naturally with a language with a data science, we need to understand how exactly the field of natural language processing is built. So where we use like search engines like Yahoo, Google, uh, they understand what you are take guys, it shows the result related to you. Now one more important thing is that they also knows what is your intention of search. Yes, what is the intention of though the words are same or different. Like for example, if you go to the Google and type something like this, so I'll go to Google and uh, I just want to take uh, some housing loans from one of the organizations. So let's go for that. Let's have house loan. So check it out. So I search for the house loan here and uh, check it this. So I got house loan, not actually I got home loan. So Google knows that house and home are same. Correct. So in this way, it's identified it. Not only that, if you go to check, uh, write this in other languages, like uh, I'll go to check my change my language from this particular uh, like input devices, like, okay. Now, see, okay. So this is, I'm searching in uh, uh, the language, like uh, Devanagari script, Hindi and Marathi. So check it out, home loan, it has identified it and based on that showing the results to you, check it out. So a lot many things we can identify, it is uh, searching in one of the uh, languages here, check this. So a lot many results also we can get out of it, it's not required that you, you should search in only English language, but you can search in other languages also, see, it has identified that this is run, this one is connected to the curves. Okay, yeah, this is similar words. So they are in uh, the English and Marathi language. They are almost same. Okay, so you can find it. So this is how it can help. See, LSE home loan. So home loan is similar to this particular words. How they knows it? 
so this is how natural language processing algorithms are working behind this particular system here search engines social networking feeds social website feeds social uh, networking like uh, facebook feeds news feed algorithm understand what you interest using nlp and shows you related advertisements and the post that you most like than other post or speech engines like apple siri or microsoft cortana they translate your language into computer understandable language by uh, what we call that so voice to text translation is done there spam filters google spam filters spam can be identified in other languages also okay and most important thing is that the spam received or any mail received is not a structured data it is not structured data so how to find the mail is spam or not so at the end of this session i'll be showing the data for spam filtering what nlp can be applied to uh, identify whether the enter message is spam or not spam okay so these are a uh, few few implementation uh, of natural language processing i have shown on this particular slides here okay so which libraries are used in natural language processing so some libraries like uh, i'm going to use natural language toolkit nltk along with that apache software foundation also created one more library called as open nlp stanford has created nlp suite and one more library like gate is also available but out of all natural language toolkit that is called as nltk is one of the most popular library used for natural language processing which was written in python and has a big community behind it why i'm talking about big community because if you stuck to a particular point or if you came across uh, the queries or questions or doubts so you can easily find a solution on various communities we are working on the natural language processing so that's why uh, nltk is very popular library that we'll use so in our algorithms also uh, i'll be making use of uh, the same library of nltk so how to install that so we can install by using anaconda or we can install by using pip so library name two libraries are required actually first library is nltk and second library is bs4 that is beautiful soap 4 it is used to extract the information from the web and uh, transform it into beautiful uh, design <laughs> that's why it is called as beautiful soap okay that can be downloaded Okay, and uh, if you want to use it on your system, so we'll be using import and NLTK. Uh, basically, there is no any alternative name given to it directly. We are using NLTK name there. Okay, so basically NLTK is a layer. See, NLTK is a layer, and uh, under the layer, we are having lot many sub packages involved. Sub packages. These sub packages we can download by using the command or the function called a download. So if you import NLTK, then NLTK dot download, it will open the window like this and uh, by clicking a particular sub package i can download it just click on that and click on this download option will be downloaded and you can use for uh, some further operations there this is nltk's official website nltk.org from where we can uh, get many of the data many of the information connected with natural language processing using python okay so before actually starting the things i'll just show you how uh, nltk will behave and will work so First of all, you need to import the NLTK and when you write NLTK.download, this kind of the window will get open. See this, it's uh, working currently. Okay, so India will get open and in that we can download some packages. See the things which are shown in the green color. These are the packages which I have downloaded in collections. Okay, they are downloaded but they are out of date. Okay, these are uh, downloaded packages. See this, models, all packages. Now for our application design, we have to download uh, some packages for this video we need uh, we need what we need oh, yeah portrait test steamer we are going to use you to download this we require a tokenizer model like punkt this also we require to download it size is given here i am downloaded but it's currently out of date so you just can uh, download by clicking on this okay then stop words this also i require i need to use the stop words from english language and other language also so i can make use of this stop words package for recognizing the stop words from the language and wordnet so wordnet is also one of the most important library here uh, by which we can uh, uh, have a dictionary of the words uh, in english language so this we download just click on that and download it if you click on this download it will start downloading this particular package check it out downloading the stop words download it and uh, we'll install that in your current working directories uh, nltk data this one in this particular folder will be stored in your current working directory maybe in documents folder of your windows and on linux i am having this in the home folder 
okay so once downloading is done you just finish it uh, so these four packages we required which names i have given for understanding this video we just uh, just download the nltk and under nltk we have to download the stop words wordnet portal test and pvnk okay let's see uh, the overview of all uh, uh, different operations that natural language processing is having just start with the tokenizing first tokenizing test is important since text can't be processed without tokenization token is the smallest addressable part in the sentence is <coughs> called as token tokenization process means splitting bigger part into smaller smaller parts you can tokenize a paragraph to sentences and tokenize sentences to words according to your needs the nltk is shipped with sentence tokenizer and the word tokenizer so let's go for understanding how tokenizing will work so let's go for this check for example i am having a sentence here uh, hello how are you let's read that and you might be knowing a method called a split by which we split this data and if you print these words check okay so is it tokenized you might think uh, it's tokenized uh, but actually tokenizer is something different now how <laughs> let's see import the nltk and uh, in nltk i'm using a function called as word tokenize so this sentence uh, which i stored here i'm providing a parameter to it and then i'm tokenizing it and then i'm printing it check it out the difference between this and this the difference main here is that here split is just checking for spaces and then words are separated but here it's separating question mark and this comma also so this is what proper tokenizing is so the exclamation marks the grammar symbols are also a token and they should also get separated and we have the words also got separated this is called as word tokenize so the first process is to separate the data to separate that we have word tokenizing methods Next to that, we have sentence tokenizers. Let's have, I've downloaded or copied some text from one of the Wikipedia pages here and uh, pasted here in the uh, text format, okay, in text. So I'll just create that. Okay, let's create it. Now, let's use send tokenize. So sentence is equal to NLTK dot send tokenize and text I'm passing over here. So let's pass this and tokenize sentences I'm getting out of it. Check this. Okay, so sentence is tokenized. If I added one more line below and if I print this send, check this, sentence tokenized. So all these sentences, uh, okay, they are uh, tokenized separately. So this is first sentence, this is second sentence, this is third and on. Fine. This is how sends are created. And from that sentence, I need to tokenize every word. So from this sentence, I'm taking sentence by sentence here in X. And then NLTK dot word tokenize X. So let's give, yeah. This is first sentence words. Okay, and uh, the punctuation symbols also. This is second sentence words and the punctuation symbols also. Then next statement, next statement, next statement, and go on. So in this way, sentence tokenization is possible. Okay, so we can make use of this tokenizing methods so much effectively. Now let's apply. Uh, I, I've just taken one example here where I'm going to apply many principles of uh, uh, the packages as well as the uh, natural language processing here. So what I've done, let's see. So first of all, I, I, I just want to open one URL here. So this URL is present. I've taken one of the URL of uh, Rajgarh Fort from the uh, Wikipedia. Okay, this is URL. Uh, if you open that URL, so you just can check uh, the contents of this URL here. So I just open this URL, open okay so this is uh, the wikipedia page of the rajgarh fort okay this i'm going to make use of it here in my system so let's see how to do this first of all uh, i'm imported url lib nltk and here bs4 bs4 is a package beautiful soup 4 which is used to uh, like uh, beautifully transform your data and uh, removing the tags making it more clear these operations are done with the help of the beautiful soap okay so here the class i imported and now i want to open this url i want to open this url so url lib dot request dot url open so url lib package contains request package inside that url open is used so i want to open that so i'll be opening in this way so let's open it so this url will be opened uh, make sure that your net should be connected then only it will get open there 
now once the url is open i'll get the response here from that response i want to read the data so response dot read it will read the data in html format fine it will read the data in the html format okay so when the data is read in html format it will be stored over here so if you know the html html contain the tags okay so along with the tags this data will be stored in html so from that i want to remove all the html tags so to do this one here i am making use of a beautiful soap class okay so this html i am passing in the first parameter here and second parameter what kind of the parsing parsing means removing that particular uh, tags will be done by parsing so what type of parsing you require that i given the second parameter there and uh, then parsing will be removed or uh, sorry uh, the tags will be removed a plain text data will be get, getting over here in beautiful soap and now i want to get this text by stripping stripping means extra spaces and new line characters are removed okay so get text get the plain text data by removing the extra spaces tabs and the new line characters and then the text will be extracted from the given data so now this data will be the plain text data if you print it just check it out okay if i print this data text uh, okay sorry what's the problem here i'm not getting this out so response is read i just want to make it separate here so let's add insert okay let's use html separately okay just let's read the response from the web page called as rajgarh fort and then read the response and print that html yes this is what html page is present over here correct and from that html i want to parse the information and then the text i need to save okay which is containing the plain text information here okay check this plain text here it contains too much information html see it is tags are there this one html tags are present i need to remove that and i want to save it in plain text format so this is what plain text i am extracted from this data by using beautiful soap uh, object dot get text by stripping okay so extra spaces and new lines are removed from there okay so that's what we are doing so one example i'll show here uh, check this new line is present here okay uh, and is it present here in it wg page content see it's present there not exactly tick okay no problem so uh, that's how we can do it now after that i want to split my data in the list format okay so i'll split my data into the format of a list so i'm using the method of uh, list comprehension over here how to do this so t for t in text dot split so splitted data will be stored in the list format here okay so this is comprehension method i'm using t for t in text dot split so splitted data one by one is taken and stored in the list second next 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 are taken and they are stored if you are going to see i'll insert one cell below here and check out the tokens see how it is separated the so splitted data is stored in the form of a list and all the words are stored inside it lot many words are there which are extracted from the given web page fine now i want to show uh, now the frequency plot so which particular word for example i want to summarize this particular article of wikipedia by top 3 words oh, for what purpose this article is written what are the top 3 words which will summarize it what we call as labels so i want to find the word which are most frequently occurred in, on that particular page so i'll apply a uh, make use of the frequent distribution uh, function from the nltk where tokens are passed and i'll have the object Whose dot plot top 20 frequently occurred words will be printed on the screen or they will be shown in the form of a plot let's see this let's run it again okay yeah see this yeah. so frequent distribution will show you the top 20 words which are frequently occurred in it see which are the words the of two yeah <laughs> so this is what uh, the words which are very frequently occurred in english language also they are shown so the is the highest occurred word maybe after almost 48 or somewhat number of times it's occurred then off then two then four then was in and on is a okay <laughs> that's very something different that's so what we call now the important thing is that these words are very frequently occurred in the uh, english language but I, I i don't want these words so these words we term as the stop words if you install the stop words library of nltk 
these stock words we can extract from the respective package now how to extract that let's check it out see so here from nltk.corpus so corpus is the input library of nltk from there i am importing these stop words so let's import it okay nltk.corpus i imported stop words and stop words dot words give a language name here this language name contain the stop words within it so if i imported that and if i show you check it out sword see these are the stop words in english language which are extracted into s word check i me myself uh, my we are ours or her she then they okay stop words so i i don't want these are the frequently occurred words so i don't want them in my system so what i'll do i'm creating a clean tokens uh, list over here in which the cleaned tokens by removing these stop words will be saved how to do this one so from these tokens i'm taking token one by one by using a for loop from token in tokens okay and now token which i'm extracting single word from the list of tokens if it's converting in lower case is not present in s word it is not present in s word means it is not a stop word okay if it is not a stop word then attach that attach that to the clean tokens correct attach that to the clean tokens so clean tokens will be created which will not contain any stop word inside it <clears throat> this is how we are going to clean the uh, stop words from okay so stop words cleaning is possible and uh, the clean tokens are created if you print these clean tokens here just check it out clean tokens okay uh, yeah see these are the clean tokens where the extra words were present stop words are removed and now i am applying this clean tokens to the frequency distribution graph yeah now check this wow perfect this is what we expect so check out the top three words here so first word is fort second is rajgarh and third is july i don't know why july is there Maybe July is for uh, six, seven number of times. That's why. And uh, it's very important to see this Fort and Rajgarh. This is what the article is all about. So frequency distribution we can find by this mechanism. So here we have seen the tokenizing. We have seen the uh, concept of frequency distribution. We have seen the concept of stop words. So as per the requirement of the system, we need to make use of this frequency distribution graph and the NLTK packages there. Okay. And one more thing that uh, we can have there, if I want to remove the punctuation marks uh, separately, so we can make use of uh, one more package called as a string and inside that punctuation marks, are, all punctuation marks are stored. So by using is uh, that word in present in punctuation, so you can remove that and make use of it. Okay, so punctuation marks are possible and uh, that can be used uh, from uh, string.punctuation uh, package. Okay. Okay, so this is how we are going to do small basic operations on the data. Sure, download it from there. Okay, now let's go for uh, some more operation that uh, we expect from here. Uh, WordNet. Now, WordNet uh, you have installed in your system. WordNet is a database which is built for natural language processing. It includes the group of synonyms and a brief definition. We have to install this NLTK package using the NLTK download, or you can see this. This method can also be used. To install the WordNet, so it's a database which is built for basically NLP, natural language processing, and which contains the uh, synonyms or antonyms uh, words inside it. So if you want to compare, you can make use of it. Just like uh, I have checked for house and home, so I, I have identified house loan, but uh, Google has shown me home loan. It means that Google knows that house and home are same. So how to know that? So let's check. from NLTK dot corpus. I am importing WordNet library, and from that WordNet, you have to set your word. Since it's word, okay. So inside it, what's the meaning of this word? I can find by help of definition method, and how to use that? I can make use of from examples method. Check this. What's the meaning of word? Everything that exists everywhere, and these are the examples present for it. Now, if I want to check. Uh, what do you mean by sport see an active divergent require physical exertions and competitions called as a sport or what what do you mean by earth check this and this 
Example is also mentioned there. <clears throat> Third planet in the sun, fifth planet we live on. <laughs> That's what the meaning of uh, this word is. Okay. So dictionary is present over there. Now let's find the synonyms and antonyms. Now to find the synonyms, uh, I'll say the words and by using the lemmas, I can extract that. So synonyms is generated. Okay. And now uh, for sin in word net dot sin sets accident. So I want to find the synonyms for accident words. Okay, so that uh, accident, uh, uh, how to find it? So that's uh, sin sets, so sentences are taken over here. From that, I'm taking lemmas. And if that lemma is containing a synonyms, synonyms will be written and I'm attaching it to synonyms word, synonyms package there. And after that, so synonyms list there. And after that, I'm printing the synonyms on the screen. Check this. Accident is just like accident, stroke, fortunity, chance event. Okay, I'll, if I check this, uh, work. Okay, not many are present. <laughs> uh, I just want to check it, uh, sport. Okay, not many words are present, came okay, to the sport. Or uh, if I want to check for a page, see, not many words. So I don't require all of this. So let's convert that into set format and print it. Okay, these are the uh, things related to the page. Similar to that, if I want antonym, that is inverse words, opposite words. So we can make use of the antonyms. So let's check it antonyms here. So since it real and from lemmas, I'm taking L. If L dot antonyms is present, append that antonyms here and then print the antonyms. So real, unreal, nominal, insubstantial. So here also I require to have a set. So only one entry will be present over there. Nominal, soft, uh, insubstantial, or unreal. If I want uh, good, see, ill, bad, evil, evilness, badness. I want uh, great. See, okay, nothing is present. There is no opposite of great. Correct. Up. Downwards, downward, downwardly, down. <laughs> exactly. This is how we can find the antonyms. Check out the code to find the antonyms. Now, uh, Two important part uh, that we need to remember here is called as a stemming. The word stemming means removing the affixes from the words and return the root word. For example, the stem of the word, uh, just like working, its original word is work. So uh, I, I want to convert this word into its dictionary format. Okay, so extra affix will be ad added to this. That affix I need to remove uh, with the help of the concept called as stemming. Search engine use this technique. When indexing pages, so many people write different versions of the same word and all of them are stemmed to its root word. Okay, so there are many algorithms available there. First algorithm is called a Porter Steamer, second algorithm is called as Lancaster Steamer. So that's how you can use it. Let's check it. <coughs> now, LLTK.stem, I'm importing the Porter Steamer and uh, I'm importing the Lancaster Steamer. How to use it? These are the classes. So I'm creating the object of this steamer. After that, Steamer object dot stem and give a parameter as working and here also Lancaster steamer steamer dot stem working if I run this check ing is removed from there if I go here this actually works separately uh, not exactly the same way see Porter steamer is showing worker and Lancaster steamer is removing er from there okay this is how it can make use of it okay w a l k e d walked so ed has removed from there so steamer basically search engine required that I, I i want the original dictionary word so affixes can be removed with the help of this particular concept of porter steamer and the lancaster steamer so you can check the output walk it's printed on the screen here like this okay steamer now go to the lemmatizer Lemmatizer. So if I want to use the lemmatizer, so I just check it out. So what lemmatizer will work? Lemmatizer also almost in same way, but uh, it contains ability to recognize the words. How? Check. So from stem, I'm, uh, I'm importing the word net lemmatizer. So lemmatizer object I'm creating for this. And then lemmatizer object dot lemmatize working. So let's see. This is working I'm getting over here. Fine. So uh, what ability it contains, if I uh, am adding this word there, so it's faint I'm getting, if I'm getting uh, some more word like uh, gone, I'm getting gone over here, if I get word gone here, and if I get uh, the word gone here, 
see this here I, I am having different outputs here I am different outputs here so lemmatizer is actually uh, something different that is associated here okay let's see how exactly it will show uh, the output okay if I am missing eight, 8 okay let's see now uh, see lemmatizer lemmatizer recognizes what type of word is that means what type of word you have to extract out of it now how to do this one check this here from this particular word associations I want to extract verb is there any verb present there no I want to extract noun yes noun is present which one association is a noun present there is there any uh, adjective present here no is there any adverb present here no so POS parameter shows what type of value you have to extract from this word that is what ability is given there now take more examples from players can I extract noun yeah players noun is player so it will remove this s and from playing can I extract verb yes play is the word present over here if I run this code check it out the player is extracted only here I got the output noun is present here in it is that yeah so remaining other is not present and if you go for this players noun is extracted player and for playing verb is extracted it is play and now if I want to extract the noun from playing See, nothing is present is printed as it is so what type of words we require in it that we can make use of it by this particular method called as lemmatizer so lemmatizer stemming works on words without knowing its context and that's why stemming has lower accuracy and faster than lemmatization lemmatizing is considered better than stemming word lemmatizing returns a real word even if it is not the same word it could be a synonyms but at least it's a real word sometimes you don't care about the level of accuracy and all you need to speed so we'll be using stemming operations here okay this is how uh, the stemming uh, operations are done in the natural language processing okay now uh, come with the most important part over here which is the last topic of uh, first part of natural language processing is this okay so we call it as the pos tagging what do you mean by pos tagging so Part of speech tagging is the process of assigning a word to its grammatical category in order to understand its role in the sentence. Traditionally, the part of speech are noun, verb, adverb and conjunctions. The part of speech taggers typically take a sequence of words as input and provide list of tuples as output, where each word is associated with the related tag. The part of speech tagging is what provides the contextual information that lemmatizer needs to choose from appropriate lem. So, what are the tags available? Check out. Lot many tags are present there. As we have seen, uh, adjective, noun, adverb, but uh, along with that, many more are present. Like, see, if you see this DT determiner, or if you see like uh, JJ adjective, like this. If you are having LS, is a marker like one in this way. Okay. NN for noun, NNS for plural noun, NNP for proper noun, NNPS for plural proper noun in this way. Okay, or we have if you go there to it will for to the store, RP particle like give up. Okay, or JJR like comparative bigger, JJS like superlative biggest. Okay, or uh, VBD like past tense took. Okay, past tense like took, VB like verb like take. Okay. VBG like verb uh, which is containing present participle like taking, VBN like past participle like taken. Okay, so in this way, uh, it identifies the POS, the part of speech. What kind of word? What kind of word is that? According to the grammar that we can find with the help of the POS tagging. Okay, now how to do this POS tagging? So uh, again, I have uh, created a text data over here like. Uh, uh, text I identified from one of the article of Wikipedia. So very large text is present over there, which I put into the form <coughs> of a multi-line string here. This one. Okay. <coughs> now how to do the POS tagging? Let's see. First of all, I need to tokenize the data into sentence format. So same tokenize will separate the sentences from there. Okay. <coughs> so all the sentences will be tokenized. <coughs> After that every sentence <coughs> after the sentence tokenizer we are going to use sentence by sentence and make it word tokenize 
okay so let's go for that so this is what tokenized sentences are and from this tokenized sentences one by one sentence i'll be taking in the i okay and uh, from that i i'll be word tokenizing so ldk dot word tokenize i okay so from i sentence i'll uh, be creating a list of words here okay so after the list of words are created i'm going to remove the stop words from the given list how to do this one so let's use list comprehension here w for w in word list okay for w in word list if that w is not in the stop words then save it in w here okay like this so i'm combining a for loop uh, in the loop uh, list comprehension and with the help of that the words are extracted if they are not in the stop words so based on that uh, this particular list is created by removing the stop words and after that the main part here the tagged list nltk dot pos underscore tag so nltk contains a function called as pos underscore tag with the help of this so i'm passing this word list to this parameter so this function assigns the pos tags to the respective words and then i'm printing them on the screen so this will be printed in the form of uh, uh, a tuple okay it will contain the uh, word and its pos tag also along with it so it will go word by word word by word uh, for sentence by sentence the for loop will iterate and then word by word the tag will be assigned to the respective uh, word there so let's see what exactly it will show yes this is the output check this is the first sentence you can uh, check this this is the first sentence this is the second sentence this is the third fourth and fifth the five sentences are totally present over there and to every of this particular word inside the sentence the pos tag is assigned so with the help of that what is the weightage that word carries inside the sentence that we can find by the pos tagging okay many applications are there that we can find for this particular concept so much useful in natural language processing okay so this is uh, what basics of nlps are and uh, maybe some more concepts are there which uh, are required in detail but uh, in order to combine natural language processing and machine learning we require this kind of minimum concept to understand and use in the program so in next video we are going to see the combinations of machine learning and natural language processing together with a small project thank you thanks a lot